Talks with Stephanie and Nally. I'm Nally and I'm Stephanie. And today is episode 8. And we just want to make things clear and tell you what exactly we believe is the definition of a, a thriver. thriver. What is a thriver? What does it mean? Is can is it just cancer thriver? Does thriver automatically mean you have cancer? Is it specific to metastatic or stage four? Does it mean you're living with cancer? Or what is this term thriver? Where did you guys find it? Um, what are you turning it into? What is the movement? This is episode eight. What is a thriver? Ooh, we are <laughs> recording this for the Our first, first time. time on video. <laughs> How exciting. Yeah, it's exciting and nerve wracking. But yeah, I'm used to being now on like, video. So funny. Actually, I have to say this. Now, <laughs> it feels different. During podcasts, Steph's all like, ah, now she's like, hi. I freeze in front of the camera. <laughs> this is my comfort zone right here as a YouTuber. But um, yes, what perfect time to speak about what is a thriver. For one, we get that question quite often, or there's a lot All of misconceptions. A lot of misconception. And two, just yesterday, the reason why Stephanie is in my humble abode is because we had the amazing opportunity, thanks to the ICRF, to see Chris Carr speak. Yes, the just queen yesterday. thriver. Queen thriver, the woman whom I believe both Stephanie and I discovered um, the term from. Exactly. I, it was the first time I even read Cancer Thriver. Was Definitely from was Carr. from Chris Carr. Yeah. And she is the thriver that we aspire to be. Or I think the first thriver we found, like mm -hmm. living with cancer. and As well as um, her teachings and her lessons and her guidance is something we followed all throughout my six-year journey and her almost nine-year journey. So um, perfect time because we got to speak with her um, yesterday. Yeah, we so heard exciting. her speak and we got to meet her. So we're really and give inspired. her a Thriver necklace. Yes, <laughs> yes. She's ro hopefully rocking the Thriver necklace as well. Yes. So I guess for one, what is your definition of a Thriver? So I think a lot of people, especially like in the cancer community, misconstrue the word thriver. It's not like we coined the word or made the definition. But to me, like my personal interpretation of thriver is anyone living beyond any adversity. Yes. Um, I think in this lifetime, we all have a cross to bear or an adversity. Ours is cancer, obviously. Um, but you can thrive through and beyond any obstacle or circumstance in your life you know I know so many people who are going through hard times and it's not just cancer that they're facing mm -hmm. and I know you like to say Nally all the time that hard is hard yeah and you know some people are going through an addiction or an abusive relationship or they lost a child or you know so many tragic things happen to us and I think being able to step outside of what you've been through not that you're ever going to forget what you've been through and it's kind of always with you, just like, you know, diagnosis is always like right here. But trying to get it from right here to like right here yeah. and to thrive and still live and, and you know, do things beyond your diagnosis exactly. and not letting your diagnosis or your adversity define you. Exactly. I think um, it's about turning your adversity into opportunity, into a lesson mm -hmm. in our circumstance. Cancer, and this is what Chris Carr also mentioned yesterday, is that cancer, you know, a lot of people are like, cancer has been a gift. I, would, I don't like to use that. I mm -hmm. think what I like to say is cancer has been a teacher. I was just going to say it's been a teacher. Yeah. And a thriver is one who learns from the lessons from this adversity and sometimes the strongest people in the world have had the most difficult pasts and it's because they've learned to rise above that. And that's my definition of a thriver. It's really anyone who turns something negative into positive, who doesn't just settle. Um, and in fact, that's why I personally could never relate to the word survivor because I felt like it was too passive for um, what I've, I've turned and transcended, transcended this journey into. And um, so that's why I think Thriver was appropriate, but also back into the cancer terminology, because as we just said, Thriver isn't always just to define cancer. cancer. It's really just in life. In fact, the definition of 
thrive is to flourish and to grow. So anyone who is growing and learning to be better and do better in this world, um, for the world, whatever for others you are facing. Exactly. But in Cancerland, in the wonderful world of oncology, for me, survivor was confusing when you live with a stage four metastatic breast yes. cancer diagnosis. Because like y- people immediately assume that when you say, oh, I'm a cancer survivor, then they're like, then they see you looking fabulous. And <laughs> then they're like, oh, how long have you been in remission for? And then you're like... I think like, I noticed this. We talked about this in another podcast. Yeah. But like, the misconceptions of MBC. Yes. Right? And sometimes like when you're, um, you know, Breast Cancer Awareness Month and you have all these like pink cancer walks and runs, yeah. it's like survivors here and that's it. And I always felt so weird. Like, okay, I'm surviving. I'm not a survivor. So it's kind of like that in between or I don't know. Sometimes I, I think it's beyond, but I was just going to say yeah. that didn't sound feel right saying yeah. that. Yeah. But even I think with the word survivor, and this is just my interpretation mm-hmm. because we all have our opinions. Some yeah. people love the term survivor and mm-hmm. I make necklaces and for yeah, survivors. absolutely. But I feel like survivor kind of, put, kind of puts a period at the end of the sentence. Yeah. Like, and thriving kind of has an open-ended, like there is no period at the end of this sentence because we're limitless in terms of what you can do Yeah. Um, beyond, again, like whatever adversity is thrown your way, whatever life circumstances you're facing, that no matter what it is, and I think that's kind of like what our mission has been to show people that here we have on paper the worst case scenario yeah. of cancer diagnosis yet we still are living as quote-unquote normal life you know and and but again beyond normal I feel like this it's crazy like even with the stage four cancer diagnosis I finally feel like I'm living a happy a healthier and even more purposeful and meaningful and fulfilling life you're more mindful like more aware mindful just like embracing the moment i think you wear your heart on your sleeve too Mm -hmm. like i sometimes tell like all my friends especially now that i'm like living in new york as opposed to la it's always like i love you i love you and maybe i don't always hadn't always said that but now it's like i just want you to know yeah i love you because i don't want to hold anything back exactly that's what thriver means and it's funny because i get a lot of comments on facebook I feel like maybe on Instagram people get it more because we're more open on Instagram about like what is a thriver but I don't know I guess the demographic as well but on Facebook for some reason I always get um, comments as if thriver is like a stage before you become a survivor and thrivers are thriving to or aspiring to be survivors but like I don't see it that way I feel like I prefer the word thriver and you said it best yeah, forever thriving forriver like, thriving beyond this cancer when yeah. we have survived it and exactly. moved on we're still so whenever thriving. people reach out to me like don't worry Nally you will be a, a survivor soon not just a thriver that doesn't resonate with me at all I actually like kind of cringe because I'm like I know like thriver is the most positive um, title, if anything, I hate titles, but if there's one I own, it's that of being a thriver. Right. And I think, like Nally said, when we first started talking is that at the very beginning, the first time I ever heard the term thriver was from Chris Carr. Yeah. And she is the epitome of thriving. Like not only has she been living with a stage four diagnosis for 16 years 16 years but she's turned her adversity into like an empire and she we saw her yesterday she's like the picture of health oh my god she's all kinds of goals (laughs) but she's a picture of health by the way how old is chris carr we had to Google yesterday because like, we couldn't believe no it. No way! I thought she was maybe like a year older than I. <laughs> no. She's yeah, she's forty eight years old and, and wow, she, Chris. Yeah, and that's young, but she looks younger than forty eight. She's just vibrant, like she, she just looks like the, health and yeah. peace, like and just peace. like light. Yeah. She has she she radiates light, mm-hmm. and she's built her an empire yeah like, and it's all about health and wellness and how to thrive beyond circumstances exactly i think yesterday too her speech was like really really something that resonated and she's such a phenomenal speaker but mm-hmm. she spoke about you know five pillars her five pillars and like easy things that you could do like especially from the audience or maybe there are a lot of people yesterday who <laughs> sorry <laughs> Laughing because yeah, me snoring. 
goals. Literally. So, um, but it's part of the five pillars of health. Sleep. Sleep <laughs> was one, one of them. them. But the first, so she presented these five pillars to the audience, like, and everyone take one takeaway home with them and start small. But it was basically like changing the way you eat, hydrating more, um, the thoughts that are in our mm-hmm. minds, like all the thoughts that we think a day, whether mm-hmm. they be negative or positive, and rest and rejuvenation. Yeah. And I liked how she formatted it because if you're watching us or listening to this, you are probably in the health wellness um, arena. Know, arena. And like, of course, we know what you think and eat and sleep and all that. It's like, sounds like redundant but at the same time what she said is like okay question yourself it's like what are you eating what are you thinking what are you drinking like and um are you sleeping ask yourself these questions and ask yourself are you even really doing it and check yourself right so what would be your biggest takeaway from chris carr's talk yesterday where she was naming the five pillars like what was your biggest takeaway from her talk the two that most resonated with me were definitely water. I need to drink way yeah. more water. I know I, I sometimes like everyone was making fun of me when I had this like ginormous jug, but that was like the one way I knew I could monitor drink. how much water I was drinking daily. Um, and definitely sleep. My sleep is so Same. off and on. And uh, my boyfriend is a music producer. So yeah. we have like total opposite schedules. He's a night owl. I like to go to bed mm-hmm. early and wake up early. So I think um, what we were doing just prior to recording this podcast was creating a schedule and adhering to the schedule and getting an adequate night's rest and waking yeah. up in the morning to be more productive. Yeah, absolutely. And like sticking to morning rituals, which I think are so important. Yeah, absolutely. One of the questions I asked Chris Carr um, yesterday was because she, her talk revolved around being the CEO of your health. And uh, that's actually one of our episodes on our podcast is how to be your own advocate. And the big emphasis is you're the boss, you're the CEO of your health. You have to make sure that you're on top of everything. And then she named the five pillars. But then if you know anything about Chris Carr, she's a New York Times bestselling author, international speaker. She it's incredible. She's been on Oprah. She's top hundred. She like launches newsletters weekly with and it's like a new project or workshop or guided meditation or a journal. And it's like, okay hand up in the air chris carr as um the ceo of your health but as as well as the ceo of chriscarr.com how do you balance you know um your healthy lifestyle as well as your pursuing your career like how do you balance thriving your health thriving as well as your business thriving and she was super honest and said that she did have a hard time with that however In a nutshell, her answer in a nutshell was that she prioritizes filling her cup first, taking Mm -hmm. care of herself, um, making sure she's the first thing in the morning is making sure she takes care of herself first. And then she... And I think that was like a huge takeaway for us too. That was my biggest takeaway. You know, we would say, oh yeah, we meditate and we do our gratitudes and... But to really have a ritual where this is like part of your daily practice. Yeah. Like I get up in the morning and I meditate. I do my gratitude. Yeah. Like really like jump starting your day because I yeah. think that's the best way to start your day and ground your day because you never know what's going to be thrown at you in a day. Absolutely. But to start from a day of peace and mindfulness and awareness. Yeah. Prioritizing like- your health before any other project because um, what was the quote she was saying? What if your purpose is to take such good care of yourself so you that can you can serve, serve others? others. Yeah, I mean, we always talk about that. Ian Lavanzan also says like you can't serve from an empty from cup. An empty cup. So it's about filling up your cup until it overflows so that people, people can, can benefit from, from the, the overflow, overflow. Mm-hmm. yeah and that's what thriving is yes. because a lot of people then see steph and i and as busy as we seem actually are <laughs> as busy as we are traveling the world steph hopping on a flight coming from new york to montreal i'm going to san francisco going to speak tomorrow at Insta- tomorrow speaking at instagram speaking at facebook writing our book um everyone's like okay but like is that what thriving means because then I'm not a thriver because you know I'm recovering and I'm healing and I don't feel well so I guess I'm not a thriver that's false totally false and 
to be quite honest with you, being a thriver is acknowledging all of your needs. Absolutely. Whether, and I think something that we both can admit that we struggle with mm-hmm. is slowing down. Mm-hmm. And that is part of thriving, honoring what your body needs. And rest is so important. And like we just said, re-nourishing yourself. And I think that's a department that we both struggle in. Mm-hmm. Um, we're both doers and we have an idea. Let's just make it happen. Exactly. And sometimes, you know, learning how to say no, learning how to prioritize things and resting like I sometimes I'm like this is so silly to admit but sometimes I'll like go to sleep and be like I wish it was the morning so I can get up and go (laughs) you know (laughs) me it's like if I'm sleeping I'm like okay let me make my to-do list so that I can save time now and let me figure out and plan my day tomorrow and then (laughs) and then you feel so productive when you check it off I've always been that way everyone made fun of me actually for that yeah yeah but thrivers like they're aware fully aware of what their body needs of what their mind needs what their spirit needs and um, they know um, as much as they're they're not scared of saying yes and taking risks and chances they're also they also know how to say no and that's my biggest challenge like I always like I'm such a like yes yes to everything let's do it all um, Natalie I need your help perfect I'm there for you (laughs) um it's like I have a hard time saying no but again like if I'm exhausting myself there's absolutely no point of doing what we're doing right absolutely and I think to someone who really like Amanda who's my business partner for Thrive Gang um I always say she's a thriver, you know? Oh, it's yeah. Like, and she's obviously the only only way she's really been affected by breast cancer so closely is through myself. And she's been on the journey with me. But this woman's like juggling being a mother to two baby girls mm-hmm. and an entrepreneur and running her own stuff. So we're always like, girl, like she's thriving, you know? And all to say that a thriver isn't just limited to cancer. No. It's, or any stage cancer. I think that's really what like... um. People think in the cancer community, Thriver is someone living with disease or someone with stage four. No, no, no. Just anyone living beyond their diagnosis, beyond their illness, beyond their hardship. And um, yeah, like seeking to have their absolute best life so that they can help others live their happiest, healthiest life. I think it's also someone who who serves, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Who helps others. On that note, we're wearing our Savage X Thriver (laughs) Well, Savage X Fenty. Savage X Fenty hoodie, jumpsuit, onesie. Onesies. For those at home, they're like really comfortable. If you can't see us, um, this video will so be on comfy. YouTube. But um, yeah, this is also an example of pretty much how Steph and I look like when we're <laughs> recording podcasts. Podcast. Home, we probably have our tea. We're in our pajamas. She's in dog New York. On my lap. I'm in Montreal. I have yeah. Neo now. Normally yeah. I have my own yeah. dog. Yeah, Lucky is usually <laughs> on her lap. I have Neo. And this is how we want to record our podcast, really raw, real talk. Like come into our home and sit down and have a yeah. conversation with us. Also, too, I wanted to say that like this past October, being able to bring Savage X Thrivers like in big, bold lights kind of to mm-hmm. highlight the word Thriver was really, really cool. Because yeah. Because it was like for the first time in such a massive breast cancer awareness campaign, it mm-hmm. wasn't like survivors or something that, you know, we can't totally relate to you know yeah absolutely so I think it was really cool to kind of get that word but even Savage X Fenty on its own and if you watch the Savage X Fenty fashion show on Amazon Prime like those are thrivers it's like women who don't look exactly what a society tells you exactly to be a runway model and here they are missing a leg overweight uh albino um women of all shapes colors sizes beauty and like every way possible yeah but owning who they are I think that's a big one thrivers own their story they're not afraid to just be their true authentic selves yep amen i think that's so if you know anybody who wants to hear this message or needs to hear this message um is confused about what it means to thrive or what a thriver is please share this episode with them subscribe to our mailing list at www.thethriversguide.com um Nally and i are currently writing the thriver's guide which is our book and we'll send you updates on the latest and greatest and um, information about our podcast mm-hmm. and, and don't forget to subscribe and rate yes. us and leave us a review that yes. really helps on um, apple and itunes on i believe can you leave reviews anywhere else 
not sure. Yeah, I, I think but wherever you can leave us a review, leave us a review. Wherever Please. you can subscribe, subscribe. Um, we'd love to get this um, message out there, and it's only thanks to you that we can. See you in the next episode. And don't forget, where there's a thriver's will, there's, there's a thriver's way. Bye. Bye. I can't move my cord. <laughs>